International competition generally fuels the scene because the international players are much are playing at a much higher level. So when you get to see someone playing at that much of a higher level than you, it pushes you to try to be as good as them or to try to beat someone of that level. So it's kind of a goal that's set for you. And that's the reason I think international competition uh, pushes it. However, it's not always the case that international case competition is better than your current local competition. So it's kind of hit or miss. You know, it really depends on the game and the scene for it. えー、ときっかけなんですけれども、えー、クワラファイブをやったきっかけは、僕はバーチャファイターを今までプレイしてきたんですけれども、えー、それでデッドアライブの方にアキラの参戦が発表されたので、でそれをきっかけにこう体験会、そのデッドアライブファイブの体験会があったんですけれども、それでアキラを使って、もう本格的に始めようかというか。もう I played Tarok and JC. I played. I played them、um, during team tournament yesterday, and I did good. I beat them. I beat them. Yeah, I beat their whole team. And today I just played casuals with them. Mostly Tarok. I mostly played with him. I only played JC and Carol once. So yeah, Tarok is good. Like I like. I like how you adapt to me. 日本人のプレイヤーっていうのは、まあ、私もそうなんですけどあの相手のキャラクターっていうよりも相手の人に合わせたプレイをしようとしすぎる、まあ、しすぎるというかするプレ傾向があるんですけどどちらかというと海外のプレイヤーはいや自分まずありきで,でそこに相手がどう動いてくるのかっていうのでなるべく主導権試合の主導権を握ろうとするのが。海外のプレイヤーの特徴としてあってあると私は思ってて、日本のプレイヤーはどちらかというと合わせた戦い方をしようとする傾向にあるのかなというふうに思ってます。考え方の違いもありますよね。日本はなんかこう堅実に堅実にこう守ってやっていくっていうスタイルなんですけれども、このアメリカというかその外国の方のドアプレイヤーって。これに対してはこうするっていう対処の仕方がなんかものすごい徹底されていて、日本とまたなんかレベルの違いとか、正直なことを言うと、アメリカの方がレベルが高いかと感じました。All right, ladies and gentlemen, here at Battle Royale 2015 at NEC 16, we got Hoodless versus JC Akira. JC Akira, obviously a top Akira player from Japan, one of the top、uh, players from Japan coming over here overseas to America. So here we go. I am Master. I will be your commentator. And here we go. Let's get this started. We're here in the clown level. Hoodless backing up. Obviously,、um, Rig has a really good back step, so he can back up a little bit. Kind of back up. And you can hear the crowd cheering for JC Akira because they're big Akira fans. International players at tournaments is always a good thing because it creates hype. It shows other nationalities you know, where they are in the game compared to their style because it's always a really big difference in styles of play from a. From a Japanese player to an American player, it's always such a big difference in how they play. Like, you know, Japanese people, you know, they may tend to play a little bit more defensively, try to play calculated, while Americans are kind of just putting everything, putting all the cards on the table, and, sitting, and then reacting from there. Like, that's how a lot of us play BOA in, in America. We just put it on the table and then start the whole cascade of guessing games from there. And it's different for Japanese people, they try to control the guesses. Which isn't wrong, but sometimes it don't work out for him. But I guess we'll see how it happens here. And you see. The player level between Europe and the United States, yeah. That's a good question because、um, in America there are so many, so good players. 
Um, in Europe, it's much, much less. Um, I still, I think it's because of the language barrier. We can, we can discuss uh, the game with each other. So I think that's why Europe has a lot to learn. The international players, like before I went to Japan, well, before me, Quiggles and like Gak the Balls and, and everybody, we all went to Japan. We actually felt like the Americans were a lot better than them. But as soon as we got over there, we actually felt like they had a lot more knowledge. And they would actually be, like if they a whole bunch of them came over here, they'd actually like kind of beat up a lot of the players that we have here. They actually really, I have a lot of respect for them. Everybody got a different mindset. That's what I see. Everybody got a different mindset, how they play, how they adapt to players, or how they, had, how they use their character. Because how, basically off US and international they have tier lists they see different things and the US see a different part about it like what the characters is like how, that's the only difference it is player level in terms of it's not much different 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 yeah, the American DOA scene is so much bigger, um, also with Free Step Dodge. Um, I mean, America is all the same language. I think that's, that's the difficult part of Europe. We all speak different languages and not every country can speak English very well. So I think that's the biggest problem Europe has, like the, the language barrier. Yeah. USA is better than in DOA than international because they just play and play because USA is spread out. They got to find local scenes for every state and everything else, and internationally they, they come together and crunch up. They get to the level every single time, so they stick. It's now just getting it. It's getting that now because more people is playing it and getting try to get together and try to get better. Nippon,日本のコミュニティはこうなんかふとしたきっかけというかツイッターとかコミュニティを通じてこうそこからいろいろ声をかけ合ってそこからなんか対戦していってなんか少しずつやっていって仲良くなって。それでなんかこうそこから切磋琢磨していく仲間とかできたりするんですけどなんかこうアメリカってなんかもう気が合えばもうすぐやろうぜみたいな感じになってなんかアメリカの方がもうすぐなんか情熱を感じます純粋にそ
Like for example, we have you know JC Akira who one time took out a team by himself, which had Quiggles, the Hawker Ball. You know, it just it had Blaze in that in that that team. He took them all out. More Tojo? Mada hai, mada hai de sho. Champion ga. Champion ga kogo de Tojo. Masika. 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 さあ、壁が近いぞ。えい。あの、僕らも全然こう。なんというものだ。さあ、肘が立ちました。さあ、3段大ダメージ。強制ボスか。さあ、これは。後方から壁やって。大ダメージ。大ピンチだ。まだま
we really started getting involved with the uh, <clears throat> offline tournament scene. And I think Battle Royale is basically the culmination of our experience with uh, a lot of the tournament organizers and obviously our community. And it just really came about. So we're excited and I think we're committed on continuing the Battle Royale Tour Series into the future as well. So this is the, the first year to kick things off in terms of uh, the Battle Royale Tour. But we definitely want to uh, commit ourselves to doing more of this in the future. I'm completely biased to Battle Royale because it's my first time coming out to tournaments and my first tournament was absolute battle. So I think Battle Royale is going to be a good, um, it's a good tool to fuel the DOA community especially and we really appreciate like the e-gaming and all of that. So. The main thing that excites me is just that I think Battle Royale this year has been kind of bigger than a lot of us have dreamed it could have been and it's really exciting to see just so many stops along, you know, bouncing around the country. And then even with the DOA Festival, we kind of feel like that's, that's a little part of it, too, of the community. And there's been, like, a huge camaraderie that's kind of grown from having this, this presence that we feel like is ours and is legit, but is, you know, also taking place at all these other big tournaments. Um, so I'm kind of really just excited to see the fireworks at the end. Because it's going to be that. It's the best of the best of everybody. But it's also everybody who has any like secret tech that they've been hiding is coming out then. You know, everybody who feels a little bit of pressure, like the pressure's on then. So like we're going to see somebody crack. We're going to see somebody do something we've never seen before. And I can't wait for it. I mean, it's just going to be amazing. It was definitely invigorating seeing the, the feeling of the... See, seeing the news that they're still supporting us for a whole another year, at least a whole another year. Um, they were really heavily involved with getting in, getting into the grassroots competitive community, working with the tournament organizers. They've, they've really extended the olive branch and really wanted to show that they are a, a, a force inside the, the scene. Um, I think that there's honestly a little too much, too many events, or at least not the events aren't really well balanced location-wise. But I would like to see if we get a second season of it to see it more balanced out and um, and everything. But it definitely it was more of a feeling that they were they were here with us fighting to show off our game and their game, you know, us playing them, their game um, to a level that they enjoy watching and that many others across the country and the world actually enjoy watching and grow support for us. Oh, I love the Battle Royale. I mean, it, it's, uh, it's so good to see uh, like all these tournaments and the point system and the qualifiers. I mean, I, I got here thanks to a qualifier as well. So yeah, this is awesome. This is really uh, good, good stuff for the community. Yeah. The scene has grown tremendously, um, especially coming from the dead, where it was virtually non-existent. So having said that, I think looking ahead. Um, our goal is to sort of broaden our base by attracting more international players and perhaps even supporting the international scene um, outside of North America um, and then allowing players from the West and the East and in Europe to engage with, t with each other um, more often and uh, as well as just learning and being more effective with each other. I think that's the future that we're, we're hoping for, a true international uh, DOA scene. Everybody that sits at home or sits online, that they, they should, you should come out and support the tournament scene. Like, it's not, not to prove that you're better or anything like that, just to show support. Because if you come off and show support, then Team Ninja is going to see that and add more stuff to the game. Like, and they do a lot of DLC, but the more you show support, the more updates and stuff we'll get. So, as far as the community is concerned, the offline scene, I'm, I always want to see more players come out to tournaments. Whether it doesn't matter if it's a local, or if it's a tournament major, or international, or whatever, it's always good to have more players come out to tournaments to support the game because it's important. It's not only it's not important just for the offline scene. It's important for the game because it lets you know that your players. It lets you know that your players are willing to come out and support the scene and they enjoy playing the game. Like when I used to live out here in Southern California before I defected over to NorCal, I always made sure that the SoCal scene would come out to Wednesday night fights every Wednesday and then we would have our casual sessions every weekend. 
and everyone enjoyed it. And because of that, we would get more players coming out to Wednesday Night Fights and come out to our, um, our, ca our weekly casuals. And it kept everyone active and it kept everyone playing the game. It kept everyone wanting to support the game. And I believe that's important to supporting your scene. Like outside of just playing the game all day, just playing the game on online all day and playing with your friends and stuff, playing offline is really important. If you want your game to have a competitive scene, it's important to do that. So I believe that if we want our game, since we're talking about DY6, if we want DY6 to be more successful than DY5, we have to have our player, we have to encourage our players and our scene to come out more. We have to show them why it's actually important it's really relevant for them to come out and play our game it's not always about winning it's always about coming out and enjoying your game with everyone else that, en that enjoys playing the game that you enjoy doa is an amazing game that is entirely underappreciated in the larger fgc it just really is the the 2d guys who you know have amazing games and do awesome stuff um it, it's it's tough to fit in with them if they're not giving us the respect and we've made huge uh, bounds this year. And so I wanna see that continue. I wanna see more and more people come to every tournament. I wanna see uh, you know, the pots get bigger because we have a ton of people. I wanna see us be able to pull more and more sponsors that are there for DOA and not for anything else. Um, and as far as the next game, like honestly, just keep on keeping on. Um, I'd like to see more male characters and a little more costumes for the men because uh, I think that's, that's one of the things that um, the community at least the american community uh wants a little bit more of but honestly like it's a great game i, I don't have a whole lot of critiques just keep on going because doa is getting more exposure i think i think it definitely has a chance chance to grow um i mean people still make fun of it for for the costumes and the sexuality stuff but but slowly but surely i see people and i talk with people and see them start to come around as they sit down and actually watch the game, actually watch, especially high level play. Uh, they understand that it's, it's not just mashing buttons or some, something ridiculous. There's, there's actually a lot of mind games and a lot of set going into it, a lot of thought that's required. And so I, I think it's definitely growing well, maybe not as fast as, as we want it, but I think, but I think, um, I don't know if a, a six would instantly jump people or not. It it probably would in the same way that it does for MKX. Did did for MKX. It's just a matter of, of keeping those people interested, and uh, that's that's where us who have been playing the game for a little while would really come in and and try to try to keep working with them, keep them in the scene. I have been playing DOA for such a long time, and I've always been competitive on the inside and I, I never got the chance to attend tournaments but um, once I once I realized you know why not go so I, I did and I have a lot of friends in the community um, Hoodless I've known for a very long time Alan Paris um, just a lot of friends I've made the closest friends I've ever had in the DOA community and that really drives me to come out so. I've actually thought about this I don't I don't know that I come out to compete and to be better than people to tournaments, but it's just the way I've played fighting games for a long time and the tournament format is just a way to measure your performance and it's kind of, for me, it's a natural course of things. If I'm going to learn a game, no matter what it is, I'm going to enter tournaments for it, no matter how good or how bad I am. I just, I, it's just part of playing a game to me because it kind of gives that arcade feel that I grew up with and that was a, a big part of my life for a, a long time. And that's what I enjoy about it. I enjoy side-by-side -side playing, people in the back watching, um, an audience there, people talking trash, people encouraging you. All those aspects of it are really enjoyable to me. Sitting at home in my undies with my kids running around and wife yelling at me is not really capturing the uh, spirit of the fighting games that I enjoy. Well, the reason why I like to come out to tournaments, the reason why I come out is because, I mean, when I kind of take every tournament vacation, I go out outside of my city, get to visit, you know, another city, 
not only that, I also get to meet a lot of my friends, goof around, see sights, do a bunch of, bunch of randoms, eat food, yada, yada, yada. But also it's to play offline because that's how I feel is how the game really meant to be played, it's just offline. Everything just flows right, it feels so much better. And not only that, playing online is, is probably even with friends, but it's like it's a lot more fun having somebody right there next to you, pushing buttons right next to you. And you can literally, at the end of the match, say good game and actually shake their hand and just laugh about it. Or maybe get salty and throw a chair, who knows? <laughs> who knows, who knows? But um, it's just a lot of fun. It's just, just a, a lot of fun. Win or lose, I just have a lot of fun. So that's the reason why I come out to the Like, because like when you're in an environment with a bunch of players, like, there's like, it's like, like, like kind of like a, like a relationship where it's just like compared to online like you don't really have that bond when you play with them and you're having fun at the same time so it's just like it's like a moment between like you want to play online and have fun at seldom times or maybe some days you won't even have fun because you know it's you know like the stuff that it might get to you or whatever but one of the reasons one of the real reasons is because I want to meet the community and to play with them and uh, kind of like have fun I, like, I, I really just want to have fun like, I just want to have fun meet the players and you know uh, get better at the game I think just like in any other sports, um, when you see the level of play rise up to where things are at with DOA right now, when you said the, the level of competition and, and the level of player like at, here at NEC is so high that I'm hoping that watching this, anybody in the world watching this, it would inspire them to get more into this game, practice, learn communicate with each other and you know just like in any other sport as well there's probably a young kid somewhere that nobody knows about a tremendous talent that decides to come out to one of these things and we may have uh, a sonic fox from europe we may have you know an excalibur blades type from the east so i think that's the future that we're all hoping and betting on well, actually, what's interesting is that my whole family was like DOA heads. Like my cousins, my older sister, we all used to just grow up playing DOA. And as they like faded on and played all the games, I'm the only one who actually like continued on and like actually pursued this game. And I had such a passion for it when I was like eight. I was watching like Master and Mamba back in like CGS back then. They used to like inspire me. And I was like, back then, I need to enter tournaments because I believed I was that good. So, you know, I, you know, practiced, I played since I was like six, and I started in DOA 3, and back then I, I would use like Genfu and stuff, but um, as I got older, you know, 4 came out, 5, and then that's when I first started, you know, I got into the scene, and that's how um, DOA actually came about. I mean, on a tournament, it's, it's not just a tournament. I mean, of course, the offline play and the nerves with the tournament, it, it's awesome. But next to that, you also have all these um, other players who love DOA as well. And we became like friends just because we love the same thing and we can talk about it. And um, also just the, the casuals and just the offline play is, is so much better than online. I hate online so much. So, yeah, I, I'm addicted to tournaments. Yeah. I see a lot of players who are hesitant of coming to tournaments and events either for multiple reasons. Uh, some, understandably, and this is even something that happened back in my day when I started doing it, is you know you have parental responsibilities or you have some sort of responsibility that you feel is more important to them than playing competitively, and that's fine. But there are some other players that I see who don't want to show up because they don't feel that they're ready. And I tend to, tend to think that like I've always tell people, the the tournament isn't it itself like the main draw for the event. It's the community that surrounds it. It's about meeting other players who share your passions and share your ideas or even disagree with your ideas and help improve upon each other by learning about those disagreements. Um, that's why I get addicted to going to these events because of that, that draw of meeting new people and learning about new experiences and opening my mind to those ideas um, and not being afraid of like once you jump in you jump in and you're done it's, it's moving in it's like jumping into a fresh pool and you, know, you just want to dive right in and it's one of those things where um, 
once you go to your first event and once you learn how things run, which is generally you're going to be up the night the night before, or two nights before, or two nights in a row. It's going to be pizza boxes all over the hotel room with 15 guys in a four-person room, guys and girls too. I have noticed as well. Um, it's growing growing gender equality in, inside the DOA community, um, where it's just openly accepted. You just want to play games until f hopefully 11 p.m., but then ends up being 4 a.m. in the morning, and it may not even be DOA. You guys are playing. You guys could be playing Pac-Man Championship Edition um, and going at who can get the high score. You know, it's it's about meeting these new friends who will, you know, some you'll only be able to meet maybe that one time, some you might see for the rest of the year, and some might become lifetime friends that you can rely on. Uh, it's, it's about these new experiences while testing, and you have the other side of it where you're testing your own, your own skill level and, and adapting and, and reading and uh, socializing with, with other people and other players at, at this mutually arranged area to, to congregate. Well, I used to come out to tournaments because I needed to like prove myself because you know I didn't I needed to make a name for myself for like Elliot, especially yeah characters like that and Alpha for characters who like nobody uses. So in the beginning I never used to use those characters but eventually you know I just got the courage and actually started working. But I'm more of a competitive person so I, I can't really play online and you know, I feel like everyone should make a name for themselves. So that's why I feel like everyone should just come out. I guess I just kind of want to call the Dead or Alive community out because it's not a very competitive scene in that they don't come out to tournaments and play. I don't know if there's a fear of failure, fear of rejection, whatever that fear is. But, you know, if I'm coming out to these, you should come out to these. We definitely need the community to come out still. No matter how many times you say this, we need the community to come out. Make a name for yourself. You know, get up off the couch. Support your game. We have a kick-ass game and uh, there's a lot of effort that's been put out by Tom, Team Ninja, a lot of the tournament, uh, tournament organizers. Like, come out and support as much as you can and let's make this DOA thing, like, massive. First and foremost, I want to shout out to my family, uh, my mother and my father, as well as my brothers. Um, they, they're the ones that kind of like help me out, they support me, you know, they even send me money, um, uh, whatchamacallit, um, and they just like text me like, how's my experience, you know, you know my father, just, my father, like, my father really likes me being happy, you know, it's just like, hey, you know, I want you to be happy, if you want to go to a tournament, you know, have some fun, you go to a tournament, you know, I was like, oh, thank you, pops, but, uh, player-wise, I'd like to give a shout-out to JC Akira for putting some, uh, some really cool show over there like I, I, what you did there was awesome man. and eventually hopefully hopefully I do the same thing you do and as long as you know as well as me and Sly Bass so but what you did kind of inspired us to be better and um, and just reach new heights you know get better at the game definitely shout out to Sly Bass um, a good Akira player uh, he's, he's always been like supporting the character uh, developing tech you know he's like the guru um, shout out to him for uh, Help me get to and and you see uh, stay over. You know I'm glad to get a support. You know thank you, bro. Shout out to all the players that came here and that welcomed me. You know that they're you know just positive towards me. Uh, welcome me open arms. Play some games with me. Um, that's about it. Thank you. So shout outs to all American players uh, and my buddies Sweet Revenge and Lupita. I'm having a blast. Um, shout outs to the Japanese players as well, uh, Terror Rock and JCA. They're doing great right now. They're still in winners in top 16. Um, yeah, shout outs to my European uh, players, the Paris players, UK players. So, uh, yeah. This might sound, sound old because I always say it, but, um, you know, I always want to thank uh, the DOA players for supporting us. Um, without you guys doing what you guys do and having the passion and the dedication for our franchise, uh, none of us at Team Ninja would have a job. Um, it, it would not be possible for us to even create new games. So, truly, I mean, we are very, very grateful and thankful for your dedication to us. Even, even with gripes and, and, and um, criticism, um, it's all good. It helps us to learn, helps us to understand what you guys are thinking and what you guys want. But more importantly, it really, um, you know, gives us the uh, feeling that, you know, what we created 
back almost 20 years ago really makes a difference. I mean, it's more more than just you know uh, interactive entertainment for you guys. You know, it's so it's been very it's been it's been a very rewarding experience for us. Um, and to see to see us come so far at this point, um, yeah, there's really very little words that could describe it, and I'm just excited to see what the future holds for all of us in the DOA community. So, uh, yeah, thank you, as always.